Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor again at the shelf where I'm keeping my growing collection of 3D printed chess sets. We're here because whenever I show people 3D prints and 3D printing for the first time, one of the most common questions they ask me is how long did that take to print? And my answer is always a hand wavy, well it kind of depends on a number of things. Well give me a guess or an estimate and I look at the print and I guess, well that was about four to six hours to print. The thing is, you actually have some control when you are setting up your print over that very question, how long did it take to print? You can set up your prints to print faster or slower, but you're going to sacrifice certain things to do it. So let's go over to the slicer. Let's take a look at the settings that we can change and how they affect print speed. And let's see if we can answer this question. Welcome to the workbench. Hey, a quick note from the editing desk before we start. You might have already noticed looking at the bar across the bottom that this video runs a little bit longer than some of my other videos. While I try to normally keep them quick and light so that they're easy to digest, this one is just so knowledge dense that it can't be handled any quicker, at least not by me. So yeah, but I want you to remember that all of my videos have additional information on my blog, Joe's 3D Workbench at blogspot.com, and the link should be right about here, and also in the description. So if you want to have more information about this, or just to digest this same information, as much as I would love to encourage you to watch the entire video because that helps my analytics, and if you want to help my channel, I'd love if you would do that. I also want to give you the option to get this information in a faster format. So all the charts and a condensed version of the information will be there on my blog. There will be a link down below where you can check that out. Okay, so on to the video. So here we are. I've got Simplify 3D up and running. If you have another slicer that's not Simplify 3D, it's fine. Go ahead and use your slicer. All of these settings will be on there pretty much. And I've got a little angry squirrel model loaded up that I made for Squirrel Squabble a little while ago. And I this I need to revisit this project, so I've had this squirrel on my mind for a while. So we're going to use him for the example. Uh, as you can see, I've scaled him up to 150% of his original size. That way we can have a, a, a little bit more data. He's so tiny in his original size, it just doesn't do much. And here are my default settings, just so that you know. My default settings is a 15% infill. I usually do two perimeter shells, um, 150 micron layer height, and my print speed by default is 60 millimeters per second. So those are the defaults that we're gonna be working at. Now let's start playing with those settings and, and talk about how they affect things. The first thing we should affect, well, actually, let's go out. Before we can e before we even play with the settings, let's play with the size of this thing. Because if you scale this model up or down, it will affect the print size. So here's our baseline. Let's prepare it to print. Simplify 3D is done. It says this model is going to take an hour and 24 minutes to print, and that's at 150% of its scale. Let's drop it down to 100% of its scale. Prepare to print. This is only going to take an not even an hour, 51 minutes to print at its original size. But if we scale it up to 200% of its size and prepare to print it, it's going to take a little while longer. It takes two hours and two minutes, more than double the time to, to print it. How come it took more? How come it's not just a nice double? In fact, it's really surprising that it's even close to double because remember, when we make something bigger, we don't just make it twice as big. We make it twice as long and twice as wide. And seeing as we're increasing all three of those volumes, it's actually eight times bigger. Eight times bigger. It should be, take eight times as long to print and take eight times as much material to print it but why didn't it? Well, the reason is simply because this model is mostly hollow. And the bigger we get, we're really only affecting the outside layers and how far those have to travel. So as we scale it up, the number of shells that we have might have a greater effect on it. Really quickly, I'll throw up this chart for you. 
this is what the effect of scale has on it. And you can see as it gets up higher into scale that the amount of time that it takes to print does indeed start ramping up. And it's a significant, this, this is the biggest change of all of the settings that we're going to be changing. The, the biggest effect of all of the settings. So, how cool is that? All right, let's bring our squirrel back. Let's reset him back to the baseline, 150. And let's talk about the next setting which we could change. Okay, so obviously if we're talking about the speed a thing can print, how long it takes to print, let's mess with the speed first. So I'm gonna go into my settings and change my speed. Now 60 millimeters per second is kind of a default speed. 30 millimeters per second is kind of considered a slow speed. Uh, you can go slower than that. I think actually for some filaments you wanna go as low as 20 millimeters per second. But taking them down to 30, it'll take an hour and 47 minutes to print. And then let's go back out, play with the settings, and change the speed to, uh, let's crank them up to 120. Now at this speed, your print is probably not going to look very good. That's the, that's the caveat. The, uh, is that the right way to say that word, caveat, caveat? Uh, well, that's the gotcha to changing the speed is that the faster you go, the worse your prints tend to look. Not always true. Lots of other things can change. A lot of people love playing with that speed setting, and, and I'm not going to discourage you from doing so. I'm just telling you that generally speaking, that's the rule. So at 120 millimeters per second, this takes an hour and 18 minutes. And here is the chart for all the various speeds. So obviously, as the speed goes up, the time to print goes down. But you can see that it kind of almost levels out. And why does it almost level out? The answer is acceleration. Come back, let's take a look at this model. Do you notice how this model that I chose doesn't have a lot of straight segments? There's a lot of bending and turning and going around corners. 3D printers, most modern 3D printers, don't just try and go straight to their speed, but they ramp themselves into that speed kind of slowly. And this means that it takes them a couple of millimeters of distance before they're hitting that top speed. However, this model never lets them get to that top speed because it's always changing direction and trying to redirect that vector. So it never quite gets up to that top speed on this model. Again, unless you make it very large. Or if you're using a model that has a lot of flat sides, a very technical type model that's like the sort of thing that you use for parts, a very uh, CAD precise, uh, uh, uninteresting model, then those ones will often get up to their max speeds and changing the speed setting on that one will have a greater effect on models with long flat sides than it will a model like this that has a lot of curved surfaces. So the speed setting kind of levels out in, in how good it is for us in, in how much change we get for it at a certain point just because of the type of model that we're using. But again, each of these settings that we're changing has their, their little nuances. So next let's go, uh, I've reset that back to the default, 60 millimeters per second, and let's play with the outline. So I've got it set for two, which is pretty normal. You can set it down to one outline, and if you prepare to print, prepare to print it, uh, we can go in and see, yeah, we're only doing one outline straight to the infill. And this model takes an hour and 25 minutes to print. But then if I take it, let's really crank up the, the outlines. Let's, let's crank it up to like 10 shells on there. Crank it up to 10 shells. Takes the slicer just another second to do that. Let's dial down into here. Look at that, look at those shells, man. That's glorious. But notice the printing time. It's only at an hour and 54 minutes. Increasing the number of shells, here, here's the graph for it. Increasing the number of shells doesn't have really that dramatic an effect on the speed. Now, I don't know why. It seems to me like it should have a more dramatic effect on the time that it takes to print. But, and maybe this is a consequence of the fact that I'm using uh, the estimate of the system, which is known to not be entirely accurate. But at the same time, it's not that inaccurate. And maybe it's just the fact that for every shell added, 
it's just a little bit more time and a little bit more plastic to draw around that, but a little bit less for each shell because they're going in and getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I don't know, but adding more shells doesn't seem to affect the print time as much as other things do. Reset it back to baseline. Let's start messing with, oh, I shouldn't have closed that, let's start messing with the infill percentage. Now, a video from Joel, the 3D printing nerd, showed that you can sometimes go down to 0% infill if your model has, uh, well, if your model works for it. Now, this model might not work for 0% infill because this part here, being kind of a local minimum, needs something to print on, and this is where infill really helps, is, is at those local minimums, or if you have large flat surfaces. Still, it's not entirely clear that it will fail. It might be okay. These parts might provide enough scaffolding that it'll work. I don't know. I don't know that I'm going to try it, but this might be a candidate for 0% infill filling. But just for, just for academic reasons, let's see what a change in infill does to the change in time to print. So at 0% infill, this takes an hour and 23 minutes. At 15% infill, remember it took an hour and 24 minutes to print. So we're really only saving about one minute by cutting out 15% of the infill. It almost really doesn't seem worth it. And I think that's because the infill is drawn in straight lines so quickly. Remember those straight lines, it can get up to its acceleration point. So maybe if I had my speed lower, then that infill percentage would have a greater effect on the total time to print. I don't know. It's one of those things to play with, but just messing with the baseline, just messing with one variable at a time. Let's crank it up. Let's crank that infill up to 50%. And let's re-slice this for printing. And it only takes an hour and 29 minutes. Just another five minutes added onto the total print time for having this much infill in here. Oh, I didn't take a look at it with 0% infill. Well, you know, I'm going to go play with that setting and let it slice while I show you this chart that shows that, yeah, as you increase the infill percentage, it really doesn't have a huge effect, although it seems to have an increasing effect as the percentage hit, it gets closer and closer to 100%. But the other thing is, this has a maximum amount of damage that it's going to do. We can't do more than 100% infill. So really the difference between 100% and 0% in this case was just a little over a half an hour of change, which is significant if you're trying to change it. Here's the 0% infill slice of this. That's kind of cool looking. Oh yes, this part right here would not love 0% infill. Although it's got enough layers on top and bottom, no. Yeah, it might be okay. Still, I kind of like looking at it as a hollow shell as it prints. That's kind of neat. All right, let's go back out. Let's reset it back to my baseline of 15%. Let's talk about the last setting that we can choose, that we can change to affect the amount of time that our print will take, the layer height. Now, I always print at 150 microns. Well, generally print at 150 microns, almost always. And the reason being, I discovered a while ago that this setting has a dramatic effect on the print time. Let's take it to, oh, let's double it right now. Let's go to three millimeter layer height, which are stupid coarse. And I don't ever recommend printing at that layer height unless you have a very big nozzle and are on a very big printer and you just don't have 20 days to do your car that you're printing it in then okay you can do 0.3 or higher but look at this guy 0.3 is ugly and the print time is 45 minutes for this that is crazy fast 45 minutes to print this little model here it looks like crap when it prints but that's pretty fast now let's take it up to 0.1 millimeters or 100 microns prepare to print now here's the nuance to printing in thinner and thinner layers printing in well it didn't do it let's go back printing in thinner and thinner layers makes your print look a lot better not just in how much detail can be crammed into each layer not just in how each layer melts together but also your overhangs look better Think about this, an overhang at one millimeter that's trying to overhang at like 30 degrees. 
has overhangs a less physical measured distance than if you were doing 0.2 millimeter layers. It would be a twice as big of a measured overhang. So because your layers are thinner, your overhangs are smaller and you can get greater overhangs. You can push those overhangs even further and get better prints. However, look at the difference in time. Two hours and 20 minutes. From 45 minutes at 0.3 millimeters to two hours and, tw and two minutes at 0.1 millimeters. Here's the graph for that. I noticed that the time that it takes to print ramps up pretty quickly depending on the layer height that you choose. That's why I chose 150 microns. It still looks really good and produces really good results, but it hits it just before that time just takes off to the stratosphere. So there you go. There's the different settings that you can change. And again, keep in mind, each one of these settings has their own nuances, has their uh, little consideration. So it's more than just the time to print that you want to pick your settings for. I've shown you my settings. Those are the ones that I recommend for a nice blend of a good look, but not having to wait too long for the print. But I was at, a, at an event where I had to have a print finish in an hour because that was all the longer they wanted people to have to wait for it to pop it out for the next one so that they could have a fresh one. And I got to thinking there could be some really cool uses for prints that you could predict when they're going to end or you could affect when they're going to end to make that predictable. Some really cool projects that oh, are way far outside the scope of what anything I'm going to be doing in any uh, short amount of time, but could be really cool. Do you have a cool idea of what you could do with controlling the amount of time that a print takes to take, or print takes to do? Uh, go ahead and leave a comment if you've got a great idea for that one. Again, remember, there's Simon. He's down there to remember, to remind you to uh, like, subscribe, share, and enjoy this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for